think um, I think everybody has a book in them. So um, <laughs> think about maybe writing a book or creating a book in some way to get your brand out there more. I mean, you can even take your blog and turn it into a book. A lot of people are doing that. And um, get on the public speaking circuit. Go to lots of networking events. Um, even hook up with local retailers and do events with them. I think that's really good because I think a lot of bloggers are sitting at home and they're not out there face to face. So getting out and um, hooking up with other brands and doing events, we do that a lot. We feature a lot of, we, multi we bring a lot of bloggers in together and have a big event at a retail store to get everybody out there. Just some ideas that I I'm think, um, to her point, Ladies Who Launch is a good... Um, She's actually a Ladies Who Launch leader in the area. So that's really <laughs> interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I mean, just from a personal experience standpoint, it's a great networking um, you know, uh, organization. But um, you know, from the experience that I have as a professional in the search arena, I have so many ideas and some new ones. So this one's kind of cool. Um, everybody's blog has RSS feed usually, so I'm thinking like well, what what we can start doing is find people who are somehow related in your niche. So maybe uh, you know you're the shoe blogger and that person is the handbag blogger or the portal for handbags, and maybe you guys can work together and exchange RSS feeds. So it's keeping the web page fresh and new to the search engine because Google is launching Google Caffeine, which is a totally huge algorithm change. It's going to be, sorry if that's a little technical, but it's going to be, sorry, it's going to be really focused on like keeping your content fresh and new. So it's super important as you move into this new you know, millennium and everything. So RSS feeds, like setting up a module on your homepage where maybe some of your ad banners are or something like that, and feeding in somebody's content who is relevant to yours is really going to help keep your page resourceful and fresh and new. And I think it's, it, Vogue just did something like this. I think they have fashion feed now where it's a conglomeration of all the fashion news on the web into this one portal. And if that's any idea of what's going to happen, I think it's really important to try to start thinking about how can I leverage my RSS feed to get more mainstream exposure to reach a new audience. So it's really about using the networking and then having something actionable that you can ask for in exchange. So I have this real estate on my site, you have that real estate on yours, let's exchange and we can keep our content fresh and new to you know, beat the Google caffeine or whatever. <laughs> um, and then obviously from a search engine optimization standpoint, I can give you so much insight. Um, but like to keep it simple, it's really important that you definitely want to focus your blog on what you're good at because as you know, the, the, the arena of you know, <coughs> the web is, is growing exponentially. And um, if you're trying to doing everything, at, if you're trying to do everything at once, you're going to start to kind of oversaturate what it is that you do best. So really focus on what it is you do best. If you're really good at DIY fashion, or you're really interested in denim, or you're really interested in you know um, vintage, really just focus on that arena. And even if you can get more granular on that level, because that's how you're going to get the maximum exposure in the search engine. Which is where I know if you start to have you know. Um, a business model on your website where you're really monetizing your traffic, you need to capture traffic, obviously. So the more specific you can get, the more granular you can get, the better your headlines are going to become, the more specific your content is going to become, and the more dense <coughs> in this pyramid format it's going, to, it's going to be more noticed by the search engine. So as you grow your site, your content starts to create a density in search around these keywords that you might use over and over, high heel shoes or vintage fashion. And eventually, as more people <coughs> link to you and you um, become more of a resource in your niche, you're going to capture a lot more long tail, as we say in my industry, search engine <coughs> traffic. So I think those are just a couple of ideas that I would like to throw at you um, for now. And I certainly am available <coughs> as a resource if you have questions um, when we get to that point. I actually have a, just a quick question. Certainly. You mentioned keywords. How, how often or how important are keywords in our stats? I, I looked, this is kind of a very story, but I looked at my stats the other day and I saw 
Naughty Pictionary was something that <laughs> led someone to my website. And I, I mean, I definitely tweeted about it, which made it then find me even pretty once again. So uh, <laughs> what did, from a re reverse engineering standpoint? Sure, I think that really speaks to like my market research background is really where I'm like a, a, a um, you know, a statistics person. I, I like to data mine and I like to look at numbers and I like to look at performance. And I mean, you'd be surprised. L.com is powered off of like this very specific types of keywords, very specific types of content. And that is really what sends the bulk of our traffic. So we've mastered that arena. And I think by looking at your analytics, you can say to yourself, okay, what are, what's sending me traffic currently? And how can I really maximize exposure on that? You know, there's tools you can use to say, okay, these five keywords have sent me the bulk of my traffic. Where am I positioned in search for these keywords? Are they coming from referring domains? Or are they coming from search engines? And your analytics is going to have all this meat of information for you that is so valuable valuable for you if you really leverage it and you really dig into it and build from it. So for example, like maybe you're a vintage fashion blogger and you have, you know, your, your site is, uh, you use the word vintage fashion blog a lot. So you're ranking in the search engine maybe on page two at the top, right? And you want to move to page one at the top. So how do you do that? Well, I think there's strategies that you can put in place where you can put those keywords in prominent positions on your web page or in links, for example, the point to other pieces of content. So in a sense, how we're building a relationship with our conversation, you almost want to build a relationship between one piece of content to the next piece of content to the next piece of content. So everything helps that pyramid be more powerful. So think of it like when you have an older piece of content, maybe you have five old articles and you know you they're all about vintage fashion, right? So then you can link each one to the next and then to the the final one linked to the parent, which would be like your home page. So it's in a sense a parent-child strategy where you're pushing older pieces of content, links and trust up to the home page. It's really going to give you power. And this is all stuff that you were able to get from your data, which which you mine through your analytics. And I think it's a very great question and super important. And there's you don't have to be a, a you know, a statistics major or a scientist to, to do this kind of stuff. It's really there and it's usable and you can act on it if you just take a look.